name is Crypto Dog to the rescue. Welcome to my channel. I appreciate everybody watching, uh, liking, subscribing. Hope everybody's uh, getting something out of this. So uh, moving right into it, 255 billion coin market cap today. Okay, everything is just kind of going sideways. We took a nice little uh, pump, uh, looks like uh, uh, last couple days, and uh, now everything's just kind of moving sideways right now. So uh, let's see, changers right now. Steam is in a double digit, 26, almost 27%. Populous, 17%. Bitcoin Diamond, almost 13%. Status, almost 12%. So game.com. Uh, you know, it, it's good to see that we do have some gainers, and then it's about halfway down the top 100 list of, of gainers. And then Tether, of course, is starting, you know, the reds. Doesn't move very much, obviously. Um, so that's the uh, overall market cap right now. We're moving sideways. It's Sunday. Um, the futures is closed. Uh, I believe CME is now back open, but CBOE, CBOE is open. CME is closed for the weekend. So uh, kind of, you know, weird to see that on the 30th, which was Saturday, we had these big pumps. But again, I put this on Hong Kong time. Um, this is from GDAX BTC to USD. And at six o'clock in the morning, Hong Kong time, they had, there was a pump at 630 in the morning. You know, I mean, their, their market's still open. Um, at a certain time, and it seems to be around six to eight o'clock in the morning on Hong Kong time, and then uh, around uh, you know six to nine. I'm sorry, six to nine, six to ten. Sometimes you can really see some movement, and of course, other markets like the UK and uh, the US are still there, just not future markets. Um, so, you know, you can still have big elephants putting their foot in the water and making the price go up. Um, in less than an hour, you know, less less than two hours, three hours. So uh, moving into a couple of the swing trades that I picked up, uh, there was a mainnet launch of a uh, high performance blockchain. And uh, instead of the mainnet doing a good thing, uh, it actually made it go down even more. So not really good to see with high power blockchain at the moment. Um, but as you can see, you know, these big swings, you know, long swings, uh, so I'm expecting another long swing with HPB. So, you know, I've, I've changed my strategies with my swing trades a little bit um, as I'm going to be getting a profit trailer to uh, help me out on my day in swing trades uh, so I can make small gains uh, even on a, on a downtrend market. Because um, we're just getting beat up for, for months. We've been all getting beat up. We're all getting tired of it, but there's really nothing else we can do about it. And, and we'll get into that in a little bit. So TKY, the key. Uh, they had a test net main launch on the 30th and boom, it did, ex you know, exactly what we were all hoping to do. It went back up. So I, um, I bought it, I believe up here and then I DCA it in, uh, I believe down here somewhere. So I'm uh, right about to become uh, profitable with the key if it keeps uh, up on upward trend and Bitcoin keeps either going sideways or up. So, uh, you know, we'll see. I'm not going to speculate on Bitcoin, where Bitcoin's going to be going and so on and so forth. A lot of people that I watch, they keep speculating on it and then it doesn't do what it says and then they 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 they, they kind of shy away from what they've said. So I'm you know, I'm not gonna do that to anybody as far as, you know, tell you where it's gonna go, but I'm gonna give you some information to maybe make your own decisions. I'm just a YouTuber, it's like everybody else. Don't um, take anybody's uh, you know, what they're saying on YouTube as Bible. Just taking it and keep it in mind and maybe go do your own research on it and, and uh, if, if you don't believe what they're saying. So, uh, you know, keep that in mind. So moving forward, I, you know, I, I uh, have Ian Bellina as, you know, follow Ian Bellina on Twitter and, and uh, I do watch him just based on his ICOs. He's so good at, at, at um, ICO um, uh, metrics that uh, I, I do like uh, to watch it. So he got hacked and he got a lot of money taken from him. So this is an update on his hack. He believes that the name of the group is called Lizard Squad, and uh, they've been behind numerous attacks on other people. Well, how are they doing it? Well, what they're doing is that they are buying, um, they're paying employees at phone carriers like AT&T and T-Mobile for employee logins um, via the dark web. So, the, and now the international law enforcement is actively watching them, any move that they make. So, um, you know, just... Keep in mind, if you have any information about these criminals, send, send it to e, ibelina88 at gmail.com. So I just want to sit on, you know, hang on that. We need to get these type of people and get them out of here and how they're doing it. And, uh, you know, like, like everybody says, everybody thinks you can't get uh, traced with all this. And look, they, they can be completely traced back through the FBI and uh, international um, enforcement and uh, they can get caught. So event, sooner or later, they're going to get caught. 
Uh, so moving forward into some mining. Uh, floods in China heavily damaged major crypto mining operation. I mean, look at this. This this operation had thousands of GPUs running, and they don't know what coins they were running. Obviously, China is really big on Bitcoin mining, so I assume that a lot of these were Bitcoin miners, and they're just devastated. I mean, look at that. I mean, I'm a miner. Uh, you know, small garden. I don't have, you know, hundreds of GPUs, but I, you know, I have less than 10, but still, it's just so I can have money to trade with and uh, so on and so forth. I don't have to put my own fiat in the market. Um, so it, it's it's really sad to see, but as you can see, um, it's kind of froze up on me for a second here. Yeah, there we go. And it's sad to see, but as you can see on this uh, chart here, this is the uh, mining difficulty of Bitcoin. Well, on the 27th, when they all had that huge damage, I mean, it took a huge drop in, in, in um, not difficulty, but terra hashes. And how many, how, much, how many people were actually mining Bitcoin on that day? And it took a huge dump and then just spiked right back up to, looks like the bottom of that baseline area of uh, terra hashing for Bitcoin. So, it, you know, it made, a, it made a nice little recovery, but man, that's, that's huge when it comes to mining. Okay, so... Um, uh, that hurts, you know, in, in a small way, it does hurt the, the, the price of Bitcoin because now we can't move it as fast and so on and so forth. So uh, moving forward, I wanted to get into over-the-counter trading, okay? The reason why over-the-counter trading is so huge is because investors don't have to put their money in the market, okay? That's as simple as that. We need investment money. We need investors to come in, institutional investors to come in and join the platform, but they're not going to. And this is exactly why. Circle sees 30% growth in investment on OTC trading service. A lot of OTC trading services are, are, are beefing up because they see that the institutional investors do want to come in, but they, you know, again, they don't want to risk their money in a volatile market like this. So they're going into on, over the counter uh, trading. So 30% increase in institutional investors joining the platform in May alone. Okay, due to the large influx in, in customers, Circle has been making moves to improve its service, offering support for high frequency trades and larger orders. So it, it's 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 as simple as that. That over the counter training really does affect investors coming into the market itself. You know, they'd rather buy it over the counter and, and not have all this fluctuation that they have to worry about. Um, and it makes sense in their eyes. It makes sense in my eyes, too. We need more regulation um, to uh, take care of this. So um, a lot of people think that it's, you know, the notorious Bart Simpson pattern, you know, if, you know where he sees uh, quick upwards followed by move downward, emulating the hair of Bart Simpson. Um, I guess, you know, it's just a volatile market. Of course, it's going to look like Bart Simpson hair, hairdo. Uh, however, other people think that Bitcoin is beginning to break from the bearish from finding support at 5,800 bouncing off the lows. So we'll get into that. I, I have a video on um, a couple of people who uh, talk about that. The SEC chairman and uh, this uh, crypto king, uh, Bart uh, Smith, I believe. And he was from he's from Susquehanna. So that's actually a pretty good uh, uh, guy to to, uh, to listen to. Uh, so whether it be a reverse in technicals or an increase in positive fundamental news, Things may be looking up for the industry. Eh, that's just, uh, you know, his, his their own twist on it. So OTC has a huge play on this with investments. So it's huge in institutional investment money. We need to get them out of OTC and into the market. They're not going to until this volatility goes away and everything starts kind of baselining like the stock market. So they're not going to risk their money. It's as simple as that. So and, and again, I'll, I'll get into that a little bit more. So another thing that's really big um, when it comes to obviously the volatility of Bitcoin uh, and the dominance of Bitcoin is CME futures. And they've had a quadruple day closing. And of course, these, these guys are saying it could cause volatility. And that's based on, um, uh, let's see, where is it here? Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Yeah, this, so the quadruple end of the week, month, quarter, and expiration date of July Bitcoin futures. So there's that's a quadruple kind of effect going on uh, right now with all that stuff moving and, and ending and the new future starting, a uh, contract starting, and so on and so forth. Could be a good thing. But we are bouncing between 6,000 and 9,000. Um, so we'll, we'll see that, you know, we're all kind of on the bottom level here. Maybe it'll go up. Maybe. Uh, it just, you know, it's just, 
too much volatility is not enough. Again, institutional money investors in there. Over the counter training has a big thing. CME futures and um, uh, the uh, CFTC and the SEC. I mean, all this stuff is in flux this year. And uh, uh, this this is actually kind of a light at the end of the tunnel. Perhaps the catalyst needed a big move needed needed for a big move up is the announcement of a Bitcoin ETF. So if approved, anyone with a 401k, IRA, or an investment account with brokers like Fidelity and Ameripraise Financial could easily invest in the Bitcoin market and push the total market cap for cryptos, cr cryptocurrencies back to where it once was. So that's actually correct. I, I actually agree with that wholeheartedly that um, if you uh, open up the ETFs, you know, 401ks, IRA, IRAs, investment accounts for brokers, you know, uh, with Fidelity and Ameripri Ameriprise Financial. I mean, those are big names. They're going to be doing things by the book, regulators, uh, regulating um, regulations and, um, you know, making people money on a slow basis with 401k. So it keeps the money working inside the market and not on these over the counter things that uh, that that we have and so on and so forth. So um, that's just uh, good to see, uh, at least on that bottom note there. So kind of moving into uh, what this means here on here. Uh oh, I don't know what happened here, but my mouse just took a, a, a crap. So, all right, let's see here. So on regulating cryptos, okay. I understand that there's a great deal of discussion about these crypto assets, but again, we're not gonna we're not gonna relax our rules based on the level of discussion. We need to know that the pricing is certain. We need to know that the assets are there. We need to know that it's going to function as our retail investors would expect those products to function. The Tory landscape. That's uh, Chairman Giancarlo at the CF. Make sure that we are, you know, regulatory. So there's a, there's a lot of conversations, and it's always difficult to to parse out if if they're immediate uh, interest or or you know longer term interest. So there's there's a lot of plumbing that needs to be built to trade cryptocurrencies uh, that are in, that are different than equities or fixed income, right? So um, so in that regard, the conversations are real, and we're kind of building it out, and we've built a, out an institutional grade platform that could scale very quickly. Should that switch get flipped, that that the BK and others have talked creates that breakout up or down. What do you think? Well, it's really interesting to see these guys have been at the forefront of a lot of different uh, new asset classes, and it sounds like that they're going to be very systematic about doing it in line with all the regulatory. And so once you get more framework around that, you're going to see the institutions come in. It's going to kind of correspond with all of this custody and all this stuff ready to go. So to me, that's the bullish, uh, that's the most bullish case, right, is that the institutions are going to come in and that's yeah. going to be the catalog. Well, and an institution that's willing to put its own capital at work. I mean, in other words, right. I think that's right. that's a big part of this. And that's kind of a throwback to the old Wall Street, which, you know, that's one of the big issues with markets today is that institutions haven't really uh, put a lot of capital at risk. So, yeah, so just going into that, kind of what he was saying, you know, um, the SEC, you know, they want to see uh, regulation so it's safer for their uh, and of course, they want blockchain because it's going to make um, uh, verification a lot cheaper to do because it's it's insanely uh, costly for uh, to verify transactions and so on on Wall Street. So that's a good thing to see. And then of course, everybody's kind of overviewing things and they're saying um, that uh, you know big companies won't risk their money. I mean, just like like you were saying, throw back to the Wall Street to the old stock markets and so on. People are risking their money, and we're kind of in that era. Like we're saying, we're in the Wild West. We're in an infantry, infancy stage of cryptocurrency. So, you know, if we're on an infancy stage, it only makes sense that um, uh, that we're going to have these type of uh, trips and falls on the way up. So, uh, you know, again, we're not going anywhere with, with, with cryptocurrency and blockchain. So uh, it's just going to be time and uh, for the big investors and regulations to come in. So once everybody – everybody's going to follow the regulations. It's as simple as that. They've all learned from the stock market, so it's simple as that. So Crypto Fear and Greed Index, real, real quick, 27 today, 22 yesterday, 16 last week. So as I was saying in my last video, I figured it was going to go up in the 20s, obviously, because of Bitcoin and Bitcoin dominance. And it just uh, depends on where it goes from here. Bitcoin takes another drop down after the weekend. 
I'm pretty sure the fear and greed index is going to be reflecting that. So uh, you guys have a great day. Please like, subscribe, hit the bell below, comment, uh, leave your Bitcoin Ethereum address, 100 and 150 uh, subscriber giveaway. So uh, if everybody's interested and um, uh, liking the channel, please like and please subscribe. And then uh, I can pick a winner at 100 uh, subscribers. So you guys have a great day. Keep up the grind. <laughs>